to another Cornerstone Church podcast and we are continuing our series in the Pilgrim's Progress, this great classic work of Christian literature which has helped so many people all over the world to follow follow Christ on the way home to heaven and uh, we've been discussing it, we've done three or four sessions now and uh, we're back again, I'm Tom, I'm here with Pete, Hello, Ben and Rory Hello. Hi, yeah. and we're all uh, pastors at the church and we've been working our way through this book, enjoying going through this book together and uh, drawing out the biblical lessons for us today. Um, last time, if you uh, tuned in, you'll know that we uh, began our exploration of the interpreter's house. So we're following Christian. Uh, he's on the road to the celestial city, to heaven. He's gone through the narrow gate, so he's going in the right direction. And he's looking for the place of deliverance to have his sin burden taken away from him. And uh, this interpreter's house is that is like a guide or a pastor or a prophet a preacher who's showing him the things that are needful for him, truths that he needs to know that are going to keep him uh, on the straight and narrow as he as he goes to heaven. Uh, last time we looked at three, uh, we saw a portrait uh, which just was a just a just a simple image or a picture that described the Christian life. Uh, we then saw the room full of dust. And we understood the dust to be uh, the ways in which we try to get right with God apart from the gospel of grace. So they're, they're kind of works, they're deeds of the flesh, they're the good things that we try to do to justify ourselves. And uh, sin only sweeps it up and makes it worse and shows us our problem. And we need the fresh gospel water of grace to still our legalistic sinful hearts and to make us clean. Thirdly, we saw the two boys, Passion and Patience. Uh, Passion wanted his reward straight away, and as soon as he got it, it broke and turned to ash in his hand. But Patience saved his best things till last. Uh, he kept waiting, kept looking forward, and he was rewarded for, for that spiritual uh, gift of patience. And now Interpreter is not finished. We've got four more scenes to look at. And so the next one is a, uh, a well somebody else explain what's the, what's the next one there's a there's a, a fire fi there's a the fire room. going yeah. on and um, you have someone trying to put that fire out uh, and uh, but it, it just won't go out uh, however much water is being poured on it and then you find out the one trying to pour the fire out is uh, to to um, put the fire out with water is is Satan. Mm. The fire is um, standing for sort of the Christian life um, and the Christian. And then there's a wall and with a little hole in it. And behind the wall is Christ pouring oil at the bottom of the fire. So he's constantly keeping the fire going. It's so, it's so imaginatively wonderful. Um, so, yeah, uh, Christ pouring oil in a little hole at the bottom. There's a wall. There's a man there uh, who's on fire. Well, he's, the, the fire is there, and there's Satan trying to put it out. But he can't put it out because there's this constant refilling of oil. Mm. It's a beautiful picture. Mm, mm. And what's um, the spiritual truth? Uh, well, the oil is uh, Christ giving his Holy Spirit, mm. and he's constantly giving his spirit. Um, and Satan is trying to you know, quench the fire of the Christian, put the Christian out. Uh, so that he, you know, uh, won't be on fire for the Lord, but Christ is always feeding his church with the Spirit of God, by the Word of God, and it keep, keeps everything alight. It's just a beautiful picture. There's so much good about that picture because the the the, the image of steam splashing and hissing and because when you put water on fire, no matter how strong the fire is, it you know there's it's quite a lot of it evaporates and it 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 describes the genuine difficulties of the Christian life doesn't it that picture because it's not like the Christian life is easy going because Christ is just always fueling us by his spirit but we do experience the the splashing and the hissing and the evaporating of the of the water as Satan throws stuff at us mm. throws stuff at us mm. so it would look like oh my goodness this fire is going to go out because mm. there's constant incessant water pouring yeah well Christian doesn't see it at first does he doesn't he have to go behind yeah, the wall he does, but I mean he he's like, why is it not going out? Because yeah. All that happens is actually the fire gets hotter and higher. Yeah. So it does. It actually does the opposite effect. And then, as you say, he goes in behind, and there's like a channel yeah. of of oil being just poured in from the behind. Um, and and uh, you know, it's it, it reminds us that, that that's what the Lord Jesus does. He pours His grace um, into us, doesn't He? And mm -hmm. uh, so that so that we may continue to live for Him. Yeah. yeah. And it's another reminder of um, 
of the spiritual war that we're in. And uh, this is something that's so easy for us to downplay in, in our secular part of the world where unseen spiritual realities are often forgotten realities. Um, but we do uh, live in a world uh, uh, with angels and demons and Satan and Christ. And, um, you know, th- this, is, this is just what perhaps Christians in a previous generation or in different parts of the world understand a, a lot more and are less afraid of talking about. And, and Bunyan is showing us here that we do have um, a demonic uh, opponent, Satan, who is his life's work is to try to put out the Christian witness in the world because he hates Christ and he hates all who bear the name of Christ. And he's a murderer and a liar and an accuser. And he devotes his uh, murderous schemes and his lies and his accusations at Christians and at the church because he wants to he wants to stop that. Um, but yet, despite his best efforts, and he is crafty, but he's permanently frustrated because he can never achieve his life's ambition uh, because Christ is going to keep every Christian, sustain them, and he's going to win the day in the end. Um And yet there's an element of mystery about how Christ keeps us going. And that's the interesting thing about this room, isn't it? That he's not, although he knows that Christ is the one pouring the oil upon his faith, um, the means by which Christ is keeping him and how exactly he's not being put out is a bit of a mystery to him, uh, which does speak into our lives, doesn't it? Because... You know, I think oft, sometimes as Christians or from time to time we wonder, you know, how, you know, left to my own strength, I would never be able to keep going. How am I still going? And yet Christ is mysteriously, you know, through his word, through his people and through all kinds of other means, keeping us, keeping us every day. Um, and that's what Christian needs to remember for the road. And he's not coming out in front of the water with an umbrella, is he, Christ? Because some people think, like, why isn't Christ defending me here? Why is he not stopping the water? And you can't, the wall is very telling because the flame is hidden from Christ, isn't it? You know, um, so you can't see Jesus often, as you were just saying, in a mysterious way, he is keeping our faith going. But often we would like Christ to come in with an umbrella to stop yeah. the water rather than fueling our salvation by his grace. Well, it's good. It's a great picture of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? We can't see the Holy Spirit, yeah. you know, but, but Christ, that's who Christ gives us. He gives us the Holy Spirit so that we can do everything and we can we can live. And so to have, you know, the invisible God, the spirit within us, you can't see it. But if you reveal it behind the wall, behind it all, he's there. And the and the and the proof of all of this is is history, isn't it? That there is a church. Christ mm. says, I will build my church yeah. and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, Satan's power will will you know not prevail um and actually we're going to go into satan's territory he wants to put us out we're going to knock his gates down and build the church so and you know that's the case isn't it <laughs> wherever the church is trying to be put out by the authorities and uh, the powers that satan uses to put put out the church it starts growing doesn't it yeah. um i mean you know, we, we hear about uh, Iran. I mean, you know, people are even saying, uh, uh, you know, not not exaggerating as far as I can hear, that, that you know, soon Iran will be seen as a Christian sort of country. Um, not because the powers, the powers are not Christian, but because there are so many ordinary people that haven't got the power um, that are coming to Christ. The powers are against that. But there are so many coming to Christ, and that's how it works, isn't it? That's right, and a lot of Jesus' parables um, uh, talk like that. So the yeast in the dough, you know, the the message of the kingdom is a little bit like that. You put yeast into a big ball of dough, and it just works its way through in a quiet, unassuming way. And yet before you know it, it's that the, the whole batch has been affected. And that's how the kingdom works throughout the world, and it's how it works in us. You know, we can't sort of see it and the progress is difficult to measure week by week and yet it's just quietly doing its work um, in us Um, so that's going to be an important lesson for him Um, so you I mean you just won't put the wasn't it Mark Twain that said um, that uh, that, uh, um, reports of my death are highly exaggerated um, because it had been reported that he died but he hadn't and uh, you know the church is always uh, being pictured as dying isn't it and in our country, but because we look at the sort of Anglican church, the state church, which is dying, 
Um, uh, you know, the numbers are going massively down, massively down. They're closing church buildings and all that sort of stuff all over the place. People see that as Christianity and the whole thing is dying. But you, well, you cannot kill the church of God because he's constantly feeding it with the spirit of God. And uh, and there will always be a church. So um, the, um, uh, the the reports that the church is dead are highly exaggerated. Well, that's what Nietzsche thought. That there's no way yes. that this, can, this can still last. Yes, yeah. But it, but here we yeah. are. Yeah, <laughs> and who, who reads Nietzsche? Yeah. O- only a few people. Yeah, yeah. And you're depressed if you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus gives a, a parable, doesn't he, Is it of the ten virgins and they're waiting for the master yes. to return yeah. and they need to keep the oil don't they burning yeah. and that's a warning not that we provide our own faith but that we must stay vigilant and give keep me watch oil in my lamb keep, keep me burning, burning. <laughs> give me oil in my lamb i, I pray. pray give me oil in my lamb keep me burning Keep me burning till the break of day. Hey, sing, Hosanna, sing. Yeah. You don't know that one? Gosh. Yeah. What's the next picture? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Time is running on. Um, so the next picture uh, is the, uh, well, he gets taken into another room. There's another scene for him to look at. And he's looking at some kind of uh, fortress or uh, battlement or, you know, some some kind of castle, really. And... Um, there's there's a there's a lot of people like guarding the door is that right or in front of the door and there's also um there's also a man who's sat at a booth with a book of some kind and you you have to give him your name and then you can uh, approach uh, the the castle which is i think a picture of the kingdom the kingdom of christ um but of course it's got all these people in the way who have got weapons of different kinds and are trying to stop people getting in um of which, of which there is a large group who want to get in, right. but they're too scared to go. Yeah, yeah okay. okay. So there's these who are a bit scared to confront these armed men yes. who are stopping people to enter, and that's they don't want people to get into this palace. Okay. okay. And then there's there's and then there's a man who comes up in the image or the vision of, uh, and he's a stout man of uh, courage, isn't he? Uh, or he's a he's a valiant man, and he goes up to the man at the booth and says put my name in your book <laughs> yeah. you know and uh, so the man quickly looks down and sort of scribbles his name down and then he just makes for the gate doesn't he and uh, he's not going to be deterred or put off by those who are in front and he draws his sword right so he knows that he's got a battle ahead of him and he's getting hacked isn't he hacked by those who are trying to stop him they've got their you know shovels and pitchforks or whatever else they've got and they're trying to take chunks out of him but he's just sort of systematically working his way through them, just Bring slicing them, them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, slicing them down because he's gonna he's gonna make it and he's gonna take that kingdom by force. Um, and so, yeah, what what are we what are we what are we seeing from this picture? I mean, I, I love the the sentence, the valiant man. They oppose him with deadly force. Mm. But the valiant man was not discouraged at all and fought fiercely, cutting and hacking his opponents. He both, <laughs> he both received and administered many wounds to those who attempted to keep him out. Yeah. He's not st- he will not let uh, the, the things stop him getting in. No. And he refuses to do so. He's going to take hold of this kingdom. And he dons armour, doesn't he, straight yeah. away? So that's the difference between him and the crowd watching. The yeah. crowd watching aren't ready to fight these people. They haven't got the sword. They haven't got the armour. Yeah. But this guy knows... It's going to be a battle. Knows he's got to put the the helmet on, brick, take out the sword, yeah, and that's what's going to get him through. It's great because because just as they go, he says, "Come in, come in." The, the people inside saying, "Come in, come in, eternal glory, you shall win." Yeah. And once he's once he's there, he doesn't have he doesn't need that armor anymore. He gets given these these garments, these garments of gold, and he's now a citizen of this palace. So so the the reward of the fight is worth it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's a man believing the promises of God, isn't it? That this life you've got to fight. Mm. And, I mean, we were saying about the verse that Jesus says about forcing your way into the kingdom of God. There are verses like this. You know, uh, we've got the whole armour of God stuff that we're to put on. Mm. And it's not, uh, it's not um, you know, uh, just protective armour. It is a sword. We are to uh, put our shoes on and march out and attack. 
And um, that is the Christian life, isn't it? You know, we're not just sitting around now Christians mm. and we're going to be sort of wheeled into heaven in some kind of comfortable wheelchair. Um, we are to get up, put the armour of God on, attack uh, the evil one uh, and and force our way into the kingdom of God like that. Yeah. It's not a gospel of works, but it is a, it's a gospel uh, that works. Isn't it? Once we're, we're once we're, it's in our hearts, and 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 that's where you see whether people are Christian or not, isn't it? When mm-hmm. Satan comes, he tries to pour out, you know, the fire. Then he attacks us in various ways. Or, but we've got to get to that kingdom of God. We've got to see the big vision, believe the promises, uh, and march towards it. That's right, and that's the that's the story that is just told over and over and over again in all the classic tales and legends that we love um you know so i'm i'm just listening to um to the harry potter stories at the moment being read by stephen fry and uh, just reflecting on that whole story again about good and evil and the triumph of good over evil and how how ordinary people who in some sense are are quite unimpressive to look at um, find bravery and courage to put evil to death. And, I mean, the whole saga would be just rubbish if Voldemort is there one minute, and but he just fails and dies, and there's no battle, no conquering, no victory, no defeat of evil. Um, you know, it just doesn't work. And that story is written into us, isn't it? And uh, we know, as you're saying, this is not our own works that are going to do this, because the oil of grace being poured on the flames the only thing that can keep us going um but nonetheless you know this is this is a little image to say um yeah we need to fight and we need courage and uh who is it bonhoeffer or someone who said uh you know when christ calls a man he bids him come and die you know that's the summons isn't it you know come but if you're going to come you're going to die you know you're going into battle if you want to come through the other side and um that's an important part of um with death and resurrection, Following Christ, isn't it? isn't it? Yeah, death and resurrection yeah. is the Christian sort of way of life. We die and rise again, and that's what this man does. And a big difference between the crowd that are scared to go in and him. So, so there's that you know there are many people that don't make it to the kingdom of God because they're too scared. Mm. Well, it's, you know, I mean, right in the book of Revelation, right at the end, yeah. you know, there's all kinds of people that are excluded yeah. from the kingdom yeah. of God, you know, um, and cowards. one of them yeah. is a coward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cowardly. I mean, it's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? A cowardly will not enter the kingdom of God. And, and Jesus predicts this, doesn't he, in the parable of the sower? You know, the seed is the seed is scattered on, on a soil and it, and it comes up, but as soon as the sun comes... And persecution hits that wilts away. Mm. And and the sun can do one of two things, can't it? It can either destroy, it can help us grow. Mm. And for this this man, he grows mm. and he fights. Mm. And there's and then his his battle scars are are, are stories of grace that yeah. allowed him to get to the kingdom. Yeah. He's like that. Who's a, who's the Scottish bloke in Lord of the Rings? The little Gimli. Gimli, 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 isn't he? Yeah. Do you sort of get that? Isn't he Scottish? <laughs> yeah. Well the yeah, actor yeah, is yeah. 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 Um, yeah, Gim- and, and, and like, Gimli's um, a little short bloke, but yeah, come yeah. on, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, it's like Caleb in the Old Testament. You know, he's he's he gets to a point where he's like eighty-seven, <laughs> and God is yes. going to take him away, and he yeah. says, "No, Lord, I want one more fight. I want one more fight. I don't want to go just yet." You know, <laughs> and it's this sort of heroic, gospel-driven mm. courage uh, mm. right until the end. Um, and it's funny that this image, isn't it? Because what's interesting about this one is that Bunyan uh, doesn't give or offer much explanation for this no. one. Because a Christian, we're just told, smiles yes. and understands what this is about, yes. and then they move on. So there's there's something so intuitive about this scene that he just maybe. Well, it's well I, I think also that. The, the 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 people that Bunyan was originally writing to, which which were people outside of the state church. Yeah knew that that's what happened to them yeah. you you couldn't be a follower of christ outside of the state the, the church of england without persecution that's yeah. why he wrote this in prison yeah, yeah. um and that they had all these things convocations and all of these things where they stopped groups of people meeting together and and severely um uh, dealt with them so so he he knew that um he's already christian's already seen this played out i think so far in, in the, his own story because he's with pliable isn't he and pliable turns away he's like the crowd watching but too afraid to go forwards and he's had all sorts of 
bruises and bumps already, Christian, because he's tried to go up Sinai and all of that stuff. And so he he probably has a smile because he says, yeah, you know what? I've seen this. This is what it's like. Mm. And so I must just carry on. I've got to continue. He thinks, he, but he thinks this is it. He can go now. He can, yeah, he's ready to go. This is the encouragement uh, yeah, yeah, that you've yeah, got to yeah. fight to go yeah. for. And in one sense, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. For this fight. And he's halfway out the door, and yeah. the interpreter grabs him by the collar. <laughs> and says, Not quite yet. Yeah, Come in. I've got two more things to show you. <laughs> and I mean, you know, we were, um, you know, we've got two more to do, and they're big. They're, you know, they're big ones. Uh, so the next, so the next room, uh, he goes into, and uh, Bunyan tells us that it's a very, very dark room. And inside the room is a man, and that man is imprisoned within a cage, and he's looking very despondent. So his face is towards the ground. He's got his hands clasped together. He's sighing. I think the phrase is something like a heartbreaking sigh or a heart heart tearing sigh, as if his heart was going to break. And then the interesting thing with interpreter here is he basically says to Christian, uh, "If you want to know what this is about, you need to speak to him." You need to ask him. So Christian is then encouraged, you know, to ask this man why. I mean, his first question is, "Why are you like this?" or something, yeah. or "How did you get here?" or "What are you doing here?" Yeah. What are you doing here? Yeah. But it is a desperate thing, isn't it? Mm. I, I think this is one of his most vivid I- images. It's, mm. it's it's really despairing mm. when you when you see this man, and uh, we're meant to be shocked. And again, I think it's it's just interesting how. Bunyan is is discipling us, mm. and I don't know any book in modern discipleship that would have this in. Mm. Uh, I have to say, and I think it's missing mm. in our discipleship. The absolute warning: if you if you mess with God's promises, um, then then this is where you could end up, yeah. and that scene is meant to spur you on to carry on living for God. Mm. It's really scary because he says, I, I am what I was not once. Well, mm. what were you? Well, I once was this uh, attractive and professing Christian. Both, and, and, and he, he looks like a Christian. He says, I'm going, I was going towards Celestial City. I mm. was excited to go there. But, and then... And then that's the way he's sort of, mm. I'm sighing because I'm, I'm not no longer that person. Mm. And then what does Christian ask him then? He says, well, what happened or something? Yeah, or, well, what he says, what are you now? Because he yeah. says, I am what I was not once. Well, I was a Christian. Well, what are you now? Yeah. He's now a man of despair. Mm. And uh, he's captive. Uh, he's in this iron cage, as he says, and there's no way he can get out. And he's totally, totally depressed, actually, by his, by his situation. Mm. But, I mean, he's like a Judas, isn't he? So he's depressed and broken and have t- has tasted of the things of God, yeah. um, but he's not repentant. No. And, uh, I mean, you get that in, in Hebrews. He's, he's got this, hasn't he, from Hebrews 6 and Hebrews 10 and stuff. They're really strong warnings. So in Hebrews 6, it's, it is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, mm. who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, if they fall away, to be brought back to repentance. Mm. Because to their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. Mm. I mean, it's such strong mm. words, isn't mm. it? And, uh, yeah. You know, and and yet that is pastoring people, isn't yeah. it? We have to warn ourselves and people, if you move from Christ and if you've tasted of his Holy Spirit, you know, you've got to be so careful because you might be what this is often called in, in Christian sort of language, an apostate. You may not be, but you don't know that you're not. Yeah. Uh, so backslide. You know, when you, you, you often hear people, I've heard, heard it, in fact, I heard it the other day, um, oh, I'm a, I'm a sort of backslidden Christian. Mm-hmm. And we must say, how, how dare you say that? Mm-hmm. You can't speak that language because you may be an apostate. Yeah. You may so backslide mm-hmm. that you, in the end, it, you're a Judas. You can't repent. Mm-hmm. You're sorry for your life. You, you've uh, disgusted yourself in what you've done with mm-hmm. Christ, but you never really repent. It's only just regret. And uh, and it will be regret for eternity. Yeah, and he certainly feels that sort of um, too far gone attitude. I mean, the, the language is, you know, I'm, I've grieved the spirit and he is gone. Yeah. 
I flirted with temptation. I've provoked God's anger. He's left me. So he's feeling all this despair here. And, um, you know, Christian's saying to him, Have you got, is there any hope here? And he's like, no, no hope. There's no repentance now. I've so, as you say, so hardened my heart to the word of God and to the, and to the light of the world, as he says, that there is no repentance for me. And he believes God is a cruel master, doesn't he? Because he believes God has shut him in this cage. Um, whereas he doesn't understand the mercy of God, does he? And the grace of God, that even if now he repented, he would be free of it. But he, he can't see that. But he can't, he can't see repent. That. Yeah. yeah, so he doesn't know God. There's, yeah. You know, when, when in, in, the, in, um, in the Bible when it says, many people will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not do this? And Jesus says, away from me, I never knew you. Mm. It's because really they never knew him. Mm. Um, and anyone who goes to Jesus on, on judgment day and says, oh, you were a harsh master, you, you jailed me up in my sin, he will say, well, you never knew me then because the cross was for you mm. and you you crucified me all over again <laughs> by denying that yeah but, but this has to be a warning to all of us doesn't it yeah that like don't uh, and i think we can so easily treat sin lightly mm. well don't treat sin lightly because you know look at the consequences of that mm. and if you continue in those patterns then then warning and we need to hear the warnings don't mm. we well, uh, I I mean, our just... sin, our light-hearted as we take it, is kicking dust in the face of Christ, yeah. who's dying on the cross for it. Yeah. And if we carry on just kicking dust in His face as He's dying on the cross, you know, we're 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 abusing Him and belittling Him, and 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 yet we're supposed to be living for Him and living in the light of the cross. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's the uh, it's the thing with you know knowledge you know so these people in Hebrews had heard so much about Christ and the atonement that He provided the salvation that He can offer and yet they weren't really acting on the knowledge and, and that's the thing you know spiritual knowledge is a dangerous thing if you don't act on it yeah. um, because uh, you're hearing the news that can save you but you don't do anything with it and you think well there's nothing else for you to know yeah. um, so if you don't listen to this yeah. you're going to re-crucify the Son of God all over again you're going to treat His sacrifice as a something that can't can't help you. Um, yeah. And that's a dangerous place to be. It's like Pharaoh, isn't it? You know, he's he hardens his heart time and time and time and time and time again. And God is hardening his heart because he won't respond to the word of God until eventually the worst plague of all is that Moses says, you will never see my face again. Yeah. And that's the point that that's so terrible because it means the word of God will now never come to him yeah. again. His opportunity is passed. He can't repent anymore because he wouldn't. He can't. And he can't because he wouldn't. And that's what this, this man says to us, you know. Reminds me of um, a quote. I read, I read Spurgeon quote and it was like more dangerous than a fool is a knowing fool mm. and so we can know all the promises and we can know all the stuff but if you're you're right if we don't act upon it mm. then that there is nothing more grave mm. than that is it mm. what what are we doing with the knowledge that we have mm. and you know we've got to ask ourselves those questions and 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 christian says let me remember this man's misery or interpret says remember this man's misery yeah right so so that you don't fall into this trap I think it was um, D.L. Moody, or it might have been Spurgeon, but I think it was D.L. Moody who tells the story of a, a man who was brought up a Christian and knew all the Christian message, and but kept putting off um, following Christ uh, for um, setting up a mill in 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 the north of England somewhere, um, uh, some kind of you know cloth mill thing, and they're extremely noisy places, um, and uh, on his Deathbed. I mean, this is a classic sort of D.L. Moody yeah. story. <laughs> On his deathbed, um, uh, he was saying um, he sees Jesus uh, speaking to him, and he's saying, um, "I see Jesus, but I can't hear. I can't hear because of the mills. The mill is so noisy. I can't hear what he's saying." Mm. And he dies. Mm. I mean, that's a very powerful Victorian um, <laughs> illustration. Um, but that's the sort of thing that's going on, isn't it? This man can't hear the mercy of God now. Mm. He's tasted it and he's vomited it out. Mm. And and now he just can't taste it again. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it's an accident that this is before the cross for Christian as well, isn't it? Because in one sense, Christian and this man are in the same position. But one of them believes they can go on to the cross. 
because uh, Christian's still got his burden on him now, in a, in, a, in a sense. It's not a jail, but it's it's the same issue, isn't it? But but one believes they can carry on, and the other one is resigned to. Um, I'm just going to sigh here. There's there's no hope for me. Mm. I'm trapped. Mm. Hmm. Okay, we've got one yeah, more. Yeah, one more. So he goes into the final room. Um, this is the seventh image, isn't it? I think he sees in the house. And uh, he walks into a, to a bedroom of some kind. And uh, there's a man there who's just woken up from a dream who's looking incredibly distressed, right? You know, he's got the sweats, he's shaking, he's uh, clearly disturbed about something. And uh, Christian or interpreter, I can't remember who, uh, well, they, they decide to find out what was the content of the dream. Uh, what, why is this man like he is? And what's he, what's he seen in his night terror? He's seen Judgment Day, isn't he? He's seen, the, he's seen the salvation of the saints and he's seen the condemnation of the wicked. Um, and it says that he's seen the indignant eye of the judge on him. Mm. So he's not just a passive observer, but he himself is taking part in this. Mm. Um, and he is standing with the wicked <laughs> and he sees a pit open up next to him of hell mm. and it's spewing out its filth. And at that moment that he's about to fall into it, that's when he wakes up and he's, he's basically, he's not ready. He realizes I am with, I'm standing among the wicked. Mm. And so if it was judgment day today, that is what, that is what would happen to me. That's the reality. Um, and we're not told what he does with that information. Um, but you would think he would have the same uh, experience as, as Pilgrim, as Christian, who when he had this book in his hand and realised his, you know, that he was in the city of destruction, he would then go on to, to find life. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little story about being ready for judgment, isn't it? Um, this man clearly wasn't, and he didn't want to be where he was when judgment day came. Is that, I mean, when you look at, um, so, so in the New Testament, Christ talks more about hell than anybody else. Mm. You know, it's very interesting how people try to take hell out of the mouth of Christ and say, oh, I don't like the Old Testament God because it's all judgment and hell, but I love Jesus. He's all mm. love and light. Um, but actually, Jesus speaks more about hell than anybody in the entire Bible. Mm. But when you look at his teaching on hell, it's really for the Christian. Uh, it's a warning uh, about, you know, life outside of Christ. Um, and again, it's a strange thing, but this is what uh, pastoral care does. Um, it, it makes, it, 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 it sort of shows you these horrors uh, so that you keep going on, mm. so that you'll have the courage to say, well, oh, you know, if I just stand in the crowd and I don't have the courage, then hell is behind me. Uh, you know, hell is for me. So I need to put my name in this book. I need to put on the armor of God. I need to go and fight um, so that I have the courage to follow Christ. So it's interesting that, that Christ does that, and that's what Bunyan is doing. Um, that's what good teachers do, They and that's what the book of Hebrews is doing. I mean, there's, there's, Hebrews is a, is a brilliant one because uh, there's loads of... Uh, Christ is better. Look at Christ. He's beautiful. Just see how wonderful he is. He fulfills all of this. He's absolutely gorgeous. There's all of that, you know, the carrot, if you like. But there's the stick in between these judgment things. If you give up on this, yeah. you know, you've had it. You know, you won't be able to repent. Yeah. And Christ himself is a model of that type of teaching. He is. I mean, just as you were speaking there, I was thinking of... Um thinking of a verse which is in Luke 12. So this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and he says, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, and after that can do no more, but I will show you whom you should fear, my friends, my sons, those in my kingdom. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five, spar five sparrows sold for two pennies, yet not one of them is forgotten by God, Indeed, the very hairs of your head are numbered. Um, it's just an amazing way of instructing the disciples because he says to them, you're my friends, I love you, you're my sons, 
Um, you don't need to fear men. All they can do is kill the body, but you should fear the one who can throw you into hell. Hold it, I thought we were saved. You know, we're in God's You are, sa yeah, you're, sa you're saved, but you should fear the one who has authority to throw you into hell. What's the next image he uses? One of the most tender ones you can imagine of a father knowing how many hairs are on their head and knows the value of them. So he says, disciples, here's the one you need to worship, one who could throw you into hell and one who knows how many hairs are on your head and loves you. And that's, 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 that's how he teaches us, you know. And uh, we mustn't be sort of afraid in our teaching, our discipling of people to hold those two images before Because people, there, there's a, you know. there, there is a tendency today to miss this out, isn't mm. there? Um, there is a tendency to, to, to say, look, you're a son of God, therefore don't call yourself a sinner, isn't mm. there? There's a lot of that sort of stuff goes around. Um, and there's a tendency, stop thinking of the negative, think of the positive. Mm. Um, uh, uh, and um, uh, so we are challenging Christ on this, mm. aren't we? Yeah. Mm. I mean, he's not ready. That's the problem, the guy's yeah. problem, and that's what he needs to hear. There but is he's a, been given a mercy, though, yeah. isn't he? There is a day of judgment coming, and he realises that he's not ready, and he says he sees the judge's face, and it's an angry judge. Yeah. You can't so, escape the eye. I cannot, can ex yeah, cannot yeah, yeah. escape it. And so, what? It, what is it that you want, Christian? Do you want to be the one who's taken up in the clouds, who has the the loving um, face of the Father, who welcomes you in, or do you want the the disapproving, angry yeah. eye of the judge? Yeah, that's right. And if that man does nothing with that dream, he will become the man in the cage. Yeah. Won't it? Because he's now had access to the knowledge that he needs. Yeah. If he doesn't do anything, he'll be in the cage, and yeah. he'll, he'll. It's interesting because we're all preachers here. So the the portrait on the wall is the preacher, isn't it? Yeah. It goes back to the wall, the so, book yeah. in his hand. He's declaring, isn't he? He's looking up to heaven, and then these are almost six sermons or seven sermons. Yeah. B because w w part of the job of preaching is to give people the vision of judgment day mm -hmm. and where are you before the Lord is his eye on you well it is and how does he see you yeah. and so it's encouragement for us isn't it to get on with this work we must preach judgment yeah. we must preach the p the pit of hell opening up beh yeah. beside people because it, it, otherwise they're going to turn and look at us on that day and said you never told me about yeah. this yeah. you said Jesus loved me you didn't tell me about this um, and and hopefully people wake up in sweats you know metaphorically in, in, as they're sitting listening and then they want to go on and do something about and, it and back to that picture of the preacher because mm. in one sense the interpreter is the, yeah. is the preacher as well isn't he yeah but he's probably the holy spirit i guess right um, yeah. uh, but the, back to that picture of the preacher before you go into the six rooms mm. he's living the gospel yeah so he's not just preaching he's not a hypocrite you know, he's got the crown floating over his head. His back is to the, yeah. you know, he did all this, I know. Yeah. But, you know, there's a, a, the preacher is a living testimony of I'm back to hell. I'm not, you know, my back to the world. I'm going to march on, fight on, word of God in my hand. Yeah. It's a great ending of this, yeah. of this chapter. Whole I mean, section. The chapter says to Christian, have you consider, considered all these things? Yeah. So this is my, here's my six illustrations. Have you considered them? And Christian says, yes, and they challenge me with both hope and fear. Yes. Yeah. Which is so important when you yeah, get yeah. both. And so, yeah. he, and so the interpreter says, well, keep all these things in mind so they may prod you to move forward in the right direction. Mm. Um, and then he prays. He sings a little way. song, doesn't oh, it's he? So good. <laughs> it's got a great word in there about being stable or something. He says, I pray the comforter will always be with you, good Christian, <laughs> to guide you in the way that leads to the celestial city. And so that's his prayer for, for Christian. Yeah. Go forward. Christian fear and hope yeah yeah very good there you go great well uh, so much there I mean as you say you know you get, when you, he's, this, I mean, you can tell Bunyan was a preacher I mean I was just thinking if I'm ever in need need to preach a sermon but I haven't got anything prepared you just need to remember interpreter's house and you've got like an hour and a half worth of content I mean, <laughs> you just sermons, ready to go. Well, don't give away your whatever. tips though yeah yeah exactly um, so brilliant hope you've enjoyed that and uh, hope it's uh, encouraged you in your walk with the Lord you can tune in again next time where we will be rejoining Christian uh, on the road to heaven <laughs>